to meet the deadline, crossing things off the to-do list, we are counting up. Beginning with one life, which we will add a second, a third, a fourth, and then on Christmas Eve we will light the Christ candle in the center, and after communion we will turn off all the lights in the church and take the light from the Christ candle and spread the light throughout the building. Because in the church, we know that Christmas is not the finish line of a race that we must now run, a race to get all the things done that we think we have to do in order to make a Christmas happen. For us, Christmas, we know, is just the beginning beginning of what God is doing. And our task is to get ready, to be watchful, to wait for God to act. And the light that is coming is one that we have the audacity to light it happens. Every morning I go for a walk with my dog uh, first thing and the most beautiful uh, moment of the morning is actually before the sun rises. There's a beauty to the dawn and to the, the purple and the pink light that begins to grow and then to, uh, to illuminate the underside of the clouds. When the sun finally comes over the horizon, of course, it's wonderful to feel the warmth, especially on mornings like this one, but it's also a little disappointing because that beautiful light of dawn and getting ready for the sun to rise uh, is then washed out. Advent is a little bit like that. Of a watching for the light of dawn. Enjoying the beauty of the, the world beginning to take shape out of the darkness. So we light a candle, even though the nights are still getting longer. For another four weeks or so, the nights will be continuing to get longer. The northern hemisphere will be sinking deeper into darkness, if you will, but we light a candle in that darkness. Because the coming of Christ is uh, already among us. We're not hoping for something that hasn't already been promised. We have uh, already heard God speak. God has spoken of his coming. God has spoken of the day that is coming when God will be present upon the earth, among us, with his people, bringing justice, judgment. The language of judgment in the Bible is kind of a mixed bag. There is language about gathering clouds and the sun and the moon being blotted out and darkness coming upon the earth and, uh, you know, these texts that fill us with foreboding and terror. And then there are those passages like in the Psalms where it says that the trees of the field will clap their hands with joy at the coming of God when he comes to judge the earth. 
coming of the light, God's judgment will reveal the truth. And that is for us both a good thing and also something that fills us with dread. To really know the truth about the world, to really know the truth about ourselves, to be completely revealed to God in the clear light of day. And not only to God, but to one another. For all secrets are revealed, all is known. No more pretense which is possible. This judgment is a judgment of the nations. For the people of Israel groaning under the oppressive heel of one foreign empire after another. The promise that God will come judge their enemies. And, in fact, summon them to Jerusalem, as we heard in Isaiah today, to receive instruction from God. Because it is the light of God's truth that will judge them. It is the coming of God's peace that will be the judgment on their violence, on their injustice and oppression and their false dealings, their idolatry and their propaganda of lies. And of course, we, since the first coming of Christ, know that we are those nations. few of us are Jewish in this room. We are Gentiles living among the nations. The church is God's uh, building of a house among the nations where God's instruction can be heard, where God's truth can go out, where God's light can be lit. And by the grace of God in Christ, we are included in that judgment, not as aliens, not as enemies, not as strangers, but as God's people, God's beloved, for whom Christ came, for whom he died, for whom he rose again. And that coming is the answer not only to a promise about the future, but it's an answer to all of those questions that never go away, those deep questions that we continually ask, that we have asked for ever, it seems. Where are you? When are you coming? How long will the innocent suffer and the wicked prosper? How long, O oh Lord? And what is given to us in reply is light. The light of Christ. Who comes to us now. Who clothes us now with light. A light that awakens within us now. A light of faith. A light of hope. 
light of love. The light that we put on as our answer to those questions. A provisional answer. It's true. An answer that still watches and still waits. An answer that is willing not to know, but to go deep into the darkness of not knowing. The darkness of history. The darkness of this Gentile world among which we are placed. There to be one small 